Welcome everyone to Coaching in Session. My name is Michael Reardon and I'll be your coach this evening. So today we are going to be talking about my blog post that came out on at 10 o'clock today, Central Standard Time. And it's actually a doozy, right? It could be a bit of controversy. It could be a bit of uh, an ouch because COVID has affected many people, right? Many people have died. Many people have lost loved ones. And where you are today could be pertinent all due to COVID. But for some people, COVID didn't ruin anything. They did all the harm to themselves. They stayed inside. They didn't want to go out and get more in their life because they were afraid or because there was a fear in their life. And now those people are blaming COVID. And those same people are wishing for the year 2022 to come, are hoping everyone gets the vaccines and continue to wait until it's safe to live again. Well, let's talk about that today. So let's head over to the blog and see what's going on. So if you're new to the stream, welcome. We stream live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, Central Standard Time. And make sure to like, comment, subscribe to all those things that videos love. And if you don't know, on Mondays, we talk about the blog post that comes out. So what we're going to do, is just head over to the website. You can see what I'm doing right now if you're watching via video. And we head over to the blog, then versus now. Did COVID ruin your life or did you accomplish that on your own? And it's important to understand, are you the maker of your circumstances or do or does life happen to you right because for me i happen to life right that's just how i live no matter my circumstance no matter the situation there's going to be a solution there's going to be an alternative where i can take and be in a better position and though it might not be the same for everyone you can get to that place in life, right? That's a choice. So when we look at the blog, we can see there's a lot of information, right? It's a lot to digest. And I do recommend reading it, but I wanted to have a discussion today about that, right? I wanted to talk about, well, what do we need to have so COVID doesn't ruin our life? Or so COVID didn't ruin our life. Bring my mic closer so it was a little bit better sound. So what COVID does or what COVID did. And it all stems to your mindset, right? It all stems to what type of mindset you want for yourself. Because people who are going to be operating under a negative mindset a pessimistic type of mindset, they're going to be the same people who are going to be struggling to get ahead, right? And we're not talking about the deaths. We're not talking about the vaccine. We're just talking about the time from when the pandemic started, the lockdown started, quarantine started, all that from that inception, right? So that was, that was in February, 2020, right? Give or take a little bit, right? I know, I know some people personally who got sick before 2020 and 2019 with COVID, but that was before COVID was mainstream and it was what everyone was afraid of, what everyone was talking about. But all the same symptoms and, and, and very contagious, but at the same time, they got through it, right? They didn't have a vaccine. They just took some NyQuil and drank some water and some Gatorade, and they were on their way. But what happened now is we applied fear to what COVID is, right? We glorified COVID to be the devil among all the viruses and illnesses in the world. And when we did that, we became weaker to that virus. Not so much immune-wise, but mentally wise, because now we're afraid of the virus. And I'm going to say 
that if we are not mentally fit, we're not going to be able to overcome easily. And when you have a vaccine, you're going to automatically assume that you are mentally fit because you are protected, right? And it could be a false sense of security, right? But that's for another day. That's for another podcast. So if we knew our mindset from the inception, if we knew our mindset from the start, what can we do to make sure we don't allow COVID to ruin our lives? Well, from the inception of COVID, from the quarantine and lockdowns, I did what the government said, of course, because they're the government, right? They should know what's best. And we had doctors, scientists. I believe Dr. Fauci was kind of like the forefront guy. And we all had faith and hope. And when they said, just, you know, we're going to take two weeks and then it was a month and then it was three months and then maybe next year. Life kept getting pushed back. And I understand that we wanted to flatten the curve, right? Flatten the curve is their lingo, right? Make back better, their, you know, lingo. Make America great again, lingo. And it's catchy. But is it effective? So, of course, we can look at countries who have 80 plus percent vaccinations and we can look at the COVID numbers and see how COVID is running rampant in the nation. But neither here or there. Let's focus on what we can focus on. And that's going to be ourselves. So now the government told us to stay inside. We need to flatten the curve, wear your mask, do your part, right? So we can get back to normal. But what is normal? Is normal having to stay six feet apart from everyone, not being brave enough to shake someone's hand and look them in the eye three feet in front of them? Or is it simply saying, I'm not going to abide by any mandate, any policy. I'm going to live my life freely. And it's different because people have grown accustomed to this new lifestyle. Wearing masks, making sure your hands are clean, not touching your face. When that's a good thing, right? You want to be hygienically sound. You want to have a good a good hygiene, right? You want to be having clean hands, not using your hands to touch your face and your mouth and things like that. And that's going to lower your chance from getting common colds, flus, etc. And now COVID. But when we look at what COVID has done, it has destroyed businesses. It has destroyed generations of family. It has put people in a realm of a negative mindset that's going to take decades to get over. Because people don't deal with trauma well. What people do with trauma typically is throw it in a corner and hope it goes away. But that doesn't work. And in this blog, I'm talking about all of that. And a must read, right? So head over to reverendconcepts.com backslash, I think it's personal development material. And there's a dash between each word. So you want to definitely read this article because it's going to help you label where you are, right? And if you are in a negative mindset, that's not a problem, right? We could fix that. But if you are if you are in a positive mindset and you haven't done anything to create further advancement in your life, then we need to talk about that too, right? Because you can have a po- you can be optimistic in a situation and still have no motion, no no action. And that's important to understand. And now we are at a standstill. We're at the mandates. We're at the we're at the point where everyone is at someone's throat. If you don't got the vaccine, see you later. You're fired. 
maybe they'll put it a little bit more nicely. Well, if you don't have the vaccine, we're just going to suspend you. And if you don't get the vaccine on suspension within a month, maybe, right? They're, maybe they're being fair. They say, we're going to fire you. And all the healthcare workers, all the police, fire firefighters are fighting back. They're boycotting. And they're letting the government understand that they will not be a part of any mandate. And this is for people who are even vaccinated, right? These people, some of these people have the vaccine. They are fully vaccinated and some have boosters. But these people are pro-choice. Pro-choice to get the vaccine or pro-choice not to get the vaccine. And it's almost cliche, it's almost catch-22 when someone says, my body, my choice, but you must get the vaccine, right? So it's on both realms. Like, you have to choose a side. If it's my body, my choice, then how are you choosing for me? And then they simply say, well, it's your choice not to get the vaccine, but then at the same time, you're not getting a job either. And I understand that. Right. I understand if you have a company and you feel that your company needs that to be safe. Hey, you know, I'm a business owner myself and I do want what's best for my employees, what's best for me and what's best for my future. Right. Where's the line? Right. Where's the line in the sand? You have the right to do it. Right. You're a private entity. But if you. Get rid of someone who's been with you 20, 30 years, and they're about about to retire in maybe two, three years, and you tell them that if they don't get the vaccine, they're going to lose their job, they're going to lose their livelihood, they're going to lose their 401k, their pension, et cetera. So people are being forced in a corner. Do you stay in that corner? Do you fight back? That's the question. Where do we go? If you know anything about a scared animal, I'm not saying that you're an animal. If they get backed into a corner and there's no way or nowhere else to go, they attack, they go forward. When you put your back against the wall, you have one option to go forward. And no matter what obstacle, what person is in your way, you defeat them by any means. And that's a mindset thing. It's not, I'm dangerous. It's not unfair. It's reality. So people who are struggling right now, people who are living their life in fear, whether for their job, to get sick. This article, Then Versus Now, Did COVID Ruin Your Life or Did You Accomplish That on Your Own? It's a must read. So let's head over back to just me. So must read article number one, because it's going to help identify where you are And also kind of guide you to where you should be thinking, right? Whether you are pro or against the vaccine, right? It it does it both ways. And if you don't want to wear a mask, if you want to wear a mask, right? If you want to walk around with pure rail and Lysol spray, go for it, right? If you want to wipe down your cart when you go to the grocery store, go for it, right? There's no one saying that you can't do these things. You could do them. It's for you to decide. But at the same time, can we have a little bit of respect for other people who have a different opinion? And it goes back to who we are as people. It's not about freedom. It goes back to the golden rule, actually. Do as to others as you would want done unto yourself. And you might simply say to go around this golden rule, well, I... Let's say got the vaccine, right? I got the vaccine 
And I want others to do the, get the vaccine too, because I would do it. I, I want people to be safe and to get back to normal, right? So that could be your golden rule there. But the golden rule is opinion. The golden rule is saying, hey, I am going to treat you well because I know you're going to treat me well. It has nothing to do with, well, the golden rule says I must do unto others as others do to me. So my opinion is what others should do. And that's where it's going. If someone doesn't stand by you, if they don't have the same beliefs as you, if they go against you in any sort of way, it's a problem. It's a big problem, actually, because now we're going to be fighting each other for no apparent reason. We're going to be fighting people for trivial things, saying, hey, I need to argue with you because you have a different standpoint and you're dangerous. And then other people might say, I'm not dangerous. You're just dumb or silly or stupid, right? Like a negative word, right? And now everyone's fighting. Now everyone's divided. So COVID is not necessarily ruining people's lives. People are ruining their, you know, their lives themselves. They're filling themselves up with hate, despair, complacency, fear, whatever. All of that is taking a toll. And it would behoove you to understand what trauma does to you long term. And typically it's going to break down every part of you, your immune system, your cognitive abilities. We need to be aware of that. Because if we plummet into a world of mayhem and anger and fighting and war, Who's going to be left to love? Because at that point, everyone's going to be seen as an enemy. And we want to avoid that as much as possible, right? We want to get to a common ground where no matter what, where does people? Similar to how when we fought for gender equality, when we fought for race equality, culture equality. All that is undone at the seams because people are deciding that they want their opinion now to be forefront. Forefront in the way they believe and what they do and how others should do. And that could be a problem. And that is a problem. Because... At the end of the day, are you getting ahead? Or are you staying exactly where you are? It's similar to how if you put a large sum of money in the bank. So let's say we have $10,000 in the bank, right? We're not going to talk about how the Biden administration is going to look at if you have over $10,000 in the bank or the IRS is going to look over if you have $10,000 in the bank. We're not going to look at that part. We're just going to look at if you have $10,000 in the bank. What happens to it? Well, if you have money in the bank, it's supposed to remain safe, right? So you're going to have $10,000 in the bank still. And when you go to the bank and you say, can I have $10,000? So, you know, they say, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. And they give you $10,000 because that's your money, right? FICA is going to protect your money up to $250,000. So if that is the case, why is our money depreciating? And that's because inflation is higher than the interest we receive in our savings accounts, in our checkings accounts. And it's typically a lot lower in checking accounts. Most of the time, half, if not more. So if we have money in the bank, our money is actually depreciating. And it's not keeping up with inflation. So that same $10,000 is not going to have the same buying power. And of course, you can buy things like stocks, gold, bonds, 
whatever, right? And and you can have your your money in different areas. So let's say if the dollar collapses, guess what? You're covered still. And is that where we're going, right? Because COVID is more than just a virus, right? It's a sickness. Because now people are so afraid of the next steps, of making a move, whether it be to buy an asset, because the economy is shaky, right? Supply chain is disrupted and COVID is to blame. Now we can say that, oh, I'm losing my house because I lost my job, COVID. I want to buy everyone a Christmas gift, but everything's so expensive, COVID. I want to go buy a nice Thanksgiving dinner, but they don't even have things on the shelves, COVID, right? And we can keep on saying that, right? We can keep on saying that the problems that we face is because of an exterior circumstance, but that's not the case. Just because something happens in your life doesn't mean you have to take it and sit down and just eat it all up. If you don't like it, change it. If you don't like where you are, move. People are so confused when it comes to, oh, I can't do anything because of this or that. And then they apply contingency on top of it. They say, well, I'll do it when, right? I'll do it when this happens, right? So right now, a contingency for many people living are, I'll get back to life when everything is back to normal. Welcome AZR118 to chat. I will get back to better, but not yet. First, I need everyone to get the vaccine. I need the, the mandates to go through. I need the borders to be open or closed or whatever, right? There's a contingency on top of what you're believing, what you're saying, what you're doing. And yes, I do. Azar, yes, I do. So all of that is going to be focused on our future. And our future is going to be dependent on us again. And the blog is important to understand what our future should look like, what our future could look like, because people are just going to be focused on their situation, right? A small piece of the puzzle. And if they can keep on looking at that small piece of the puzzle, they're not going to be able to see the bigger picture. They're not gonna be able to see five, 10, 20 years from now, what today is bringing them, what today could have brought them. And for people who fail to take action today, tomorrow is going to be a detriment to them. And that's where regret comes in, not failure, regret for not taking action, for not standing up to their beliefs or their ideals. So did, so, so did COVID ruin your life or did you do that by yourself? Because we can always blame someone. We can make an excuse and we can say that the world is to blame for our circumstance, for our environment, for our life. Or we can change that. Just because you grew up poor does not mean you have to stay poor. Just because you were hated doesn't mean you can't be loved. And no matter your situation, whether you're sick or healthy, it can change. But when it changes, what do you do? Do you forget about it? Or do you make sure you stay exactly where you are? And I hope people decide to stay where they are once they get to some place they love. They say, I really like it here. This feels good. I don't mind spending my, the rest of my life like this. But then I always encourage you to challenge yourself a little bit more past that point. 
So yes, you're at this point, you're at this place in your life. Now challenge yourself. You got everything you want, everything you need. You're at the place where you're happy, you're satisfied. That's your most desired life. But then I encourage you to look around you and not just to help anyone up, but to help people that you want to be at your table, to help people you want to have in your life and to bring them up too. Because sometimes people just need a hand. They're knocked down, they're afraid, and they need someone just to say, come with me. And that's powerful. Because if you're afraid for your life, you call 911. Cops show up. Are you still afraid? Maybe a little bit. But you have a sense of security now. And it might be a false sense of security, too. If you're going to be hoping 911 gets there as soon as something happens. Everything has broken down. The workforce has took a huge hit. Every profession is struggling. Not just nurses or doctors, but police and firefighters too. There are individuals who are working overtime, seven days a week, sacrificing seeing their family just to make sure people stay safe. And yeah, they're making some money, but they're doing something that they love, right? To give, to save, to help. So they're in a place, they're in a position where even though COVID was out, running rampant is still out there. They decided that them helping is going to be better than staying inside, than waiting, than ignoring. And I ask you to read this blog, then versus now, did COVID ruin our life or did you do that by yourself? And it's going to teach you something about yourself. It's going to show you, are you a person who goes after what they are supposed to go after, regardless of situations? Or are you a person to listen to mommy and daddy? And when they say no, you say, okay. Because if you're over the age of 21, and I mean, you can even say 18, but I'm just gonna say 21. If you're over the age of 21, Everything you do now is your choice. So if you decide to wait for a better tomorrow, that is your choice. If you decide to take the initiative to be more than you were yesterday, that's a choice. If you decide to live abundantly, that's a choice. So I have a question in chat. Do you think some of these new precautions that we have will continue in public, such as wearing masks more often, online schooling, or staying further from people? And when do you think that will change? So once fear is instilled in society, people are going to be filled with fear. And it's not going to take much for people to change, but the people who are go who could implement that change are going to continue with the rhetoric, right? And I'm going to explain that. For example, Dr. Fauci came out in 2020. Don't wear a mask because they're not effective, right? And then he comes out later and he says, wear a mask. Then he says, wear two masks. It's common sense. Right. So over a year of programming of not wearing a mask, of wearing a mask. And the reason why he said don't wear a mask is because he didn't want supply chains to be disrupted. He didn't want everyone to buy up all the masks and people to freak out. So he said no. But we have other scientists with higher degrees, more years in in edge or more years 
in the field and a further education that Dr. Fauci coming out saying masks do not help. They will not help. And it's true. Surgical masks and the cloth masks do not protect you from COVID virus. If you have an N95 mask, then now we're talking. Now we're in business. Yes, you are going to be more protected from catching COVID out in the air, you know, out, out in public, out in the air, right? So is that going to be something that's going to continue long term? And it's going to continue as long as people are afraid. As long as there is a fear of COVID, people are going to continue to wear masks. For example, in my gym, we have some gym goers who wear masks, right? We have some people who wear cloth masks. We have some people who wear just the, the surgical blue mask. And then we have people who wear the N95 masks. People who wear the N95 masks are going to be in a better position to not catch any virus if there was a virus in the gym, right? So if everyone got sick in the gym and the guy wearing the cloth mask, he's probably going to get sick. The guy wearing a surgical mask is probably going to get sick. And then the guy who has N95 mask, as long as he's pro practicing proper hygiene, he's probably going to be in a better situation. Now, do we know that for certain? No, right? That's just science. That's just data, right? So what the mask does, what the mask can prevent. So as long as people are afraid of this virus, expect mask, you know, people wearing masks, expect online schooling to keep happening if there's ever a spike in a in a state even a district if a district saw a spike in COVID, they're going to say everyone homeschool get on the zoom call see you in class and there's some there's some states who have implemented online schooling for people if there's a snow day so if there's detriment weather whether it be five feet of snow or two inches and in ice, they say, well, we're not going to bring you to school because that's going to be dangerous. But guess what? Homeschool is on. Get ready. And the whole staying away from people now is almost like someone has leprosy, right? I don't know if you're sick. That's basically what was told to us, right? It's from, from early on, you don't know if someone's sick, right? They can be unsymptomatic. And I fought back early on when, when, when I had to like get PCR tests done and to, to tell me I was healthy, right? I know my body. I know if I'm feeling wrong. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Every morning I do a self-assessment on myself. Am I at 100% or am I not? First thing that goes in my mind or comes to my mind. And if I'm at 100%, the day starts. If I'm not in 100%, I figure out what went wrong to make me sub 100%. Because if I didn't get enough sleep, then I need to go to sleep earlier. If I, if I didn't eat properly, I need to make sure my diet is on point. Because that's on me. If I'm not 100% every day when I wake up, that's on me. So the whole PCR test telling me I'm healthy. Oh, you don't got COVID. You're fine. I already knew that. I don't need a test to tell me I'm healthy. Just like I don't need a mask to tell me to, to keep me safe. It's an opinion. And as long as people have their opinion, as long as people have their fears, their doubts, all that's going to remain there. So COVID's going to stay there. And is it going to go away? Probably not. Right. Think of like China, for example. Right. How many people wear masks in China just going out, going to school? They just wear masks. This is part of the society. And now it's part of our society. Fortunately, you know, some states, Florida, Texas, Arizona, like they're not as stringent on the mask wearing. Right. So you can go into establishments wearing masks. I know there's some states like California and New York, they're very strict on on having vaccine mandates, wearing your masks inside, et cetera, et cetera. But all the people I asked, even the people who were pro mask, right, pro mask, pro vaccine, 
they thought it was so dumb that they have to wear a mask going into an establishment. And yet, once they got to their table, they can take their mask off. So they needed a mask to walk to the table. But as soon as they got to the mask, or, or as soon as they got to the table, they could take off their mask. And that doesn't make sense. And they knew it didn't make sense. They basically said, either I, I would get takeout or I would just take the risk. But for people who are are living their life very cautiously or in fear, it's a choice. Is it a wrong choice? No, it's not a wrong choice. It's your choice. It's their choice, right? And people forget and people fail to understand that they have choices in life. People think that, oh, Michael has to do what I say because I do it in his only common practice and his only common sense is science, right? And we can make up any type of rhetoric or any type of falsehood for people to believe. But the goal is to get people away from fear. I don't use fear to get people to do what I want. I have expectations for people. My expectation for you is this. And the expectation will be followed because if it's not followed, these are the consequences. There's expectations and there's consequences. For the people in my life, for my friends, for my family, for anyone. So getting past that point, the blog, reverendconcepts.com backslash personal dash development dash material, or you can just head over to reverendconcepts.com and then go to the resource tab and make sure to read that article. Very good article. And you want to make sure you're going to be in a position to be better, right? We want you to be in a position where you don't have to be afraid of what could happen. Similar to when you get in a car, you expect to get to your destination unharmed. So why not go out, be free, and not expect to get sick? Because your mindset is powerful. If you tell yourself that you're healthy and that you're going to get better, if you get sick, that's what's going to happen. I can tell you many stories on mindset when it comes to illnesses like cancer or maybe even COVID. But they all have a common set point. And that is the person define what they want it for them for their life. So final question from Azar. What do you think about the fourth dose CDC is pushing toward the, the immune compromised people? Again, I'm pro people choosing what they need for themselves. Now, if an immune compromised person didn't want the vaccine, they don't have to take the vaccine. Now, if they were immune compromised and they said, all right, I need this vaccine. Give me the doses. Give me 17 doses. I don't care. Hook me up. Juice me. Okay. Now for those people, that's their choice. That's fine. The CDC can recommend whatever they want for people. And this is people's choice at that point to get the shot. Now, when the government says things are going to be mandatory, that's where I have an issue. Because if I say it's mandatory to give me $5 every single time you come into my house, you're not going to come to my house anymore. Maybe you like me and you want to come to my house and you give me $5. But mandatory. It is mandatory for you to get the shot. It is now mandatory. It just takes away the choice. It just takes away our freedom, our rights. 
And it's not the Joe Biden, oh, freedom this, freedom this. <laughs> it's literally, what if I told you that you can't vote anymore? I'm taking it away from you. No, you can't do that. That's not fair. I have rights. I have freedom. This is in the Constitution. But you're telling me I have to do things. Why can't I tell you to do things? You're not allowed to vote anymore. You're not allowed to breathe anymore. How about that? I'm mandating that all the air is mine now. It's silly. Let people be people. Similar to how people learn from their mistakes. And I've heard many pro-vaccine people say, if they get sick and die, let them die. Pretty harsh, I think. But that's the way they want to think. So it's all about what people want, what people think. Because if they think this is going to save them, if they think they're, the government's going to bail them out and take care of them, guess what? That's what they believe. And if you think and you believe something enough, it becomes your truth. And your truth becomes your reality. So people who are having a limiting mindset where they believe they can't do something, guess what? I assure you they won't be able to do it because they already put a stigma on that thought saying it can't be done. Similar to Roger Bannister with the four minute mile. Everyone said it couldn't be done. If you try to run a four, a, a sub four minute mile, your heart will explode. Guess what Roger Bannister did? He ran that mile in under four minutes. And guess what happened after Roger Bannister ran that mile? Everyone started to see that it was possible. And then people started to break his record. Nothing's impossible. It's only impossible if you let it. So we will be back on Wednesday. I'm going to probably do a workshop on leadership. That's what I'm kind of gearing at. So Wednesday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, maybe sharp, maybe a little bit late. Who knows? But what we're looking for is for some good conversation, some good knowledge, and to help you get the mindset that you're looking for. So I will see you on Wednesday. And until then, take care.